and welcome to Living In with Amy. I'm really excited today to have a special guest, Dr. Cuisenberry. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so we are here to talk a little bit about some health issues that are going on, not just in our community, but maybe affecting you um, as you are living in during this COVID pandemic. But one of the things is it's fall. And so seasonal allergies, you know, we have this COVID pandemic, right. but we now have flu season upon us. Flu season, yeah. So what do you think, Dr. Cuisenberry, is really important for our audience to know about flu season and how to protect themselves? Well, first of all, thanks for inviting me. It's good to be here with you. And um, a couple of things about flu. Um, flu season typically starts, the peak of flu is usually in February and March, but we have seen flu start as usually as early as September. Uh, so the best time to get your flu vaccine is now. Now, hint, 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 uh, uh, in October through November, I oftentimes tell people that Halloween through Thanksgiving is a good window for getting your vaccine. So the influenza vaccine is really, really important to get to prevent people from getting influenza. Uh, a lot of people get this weirdness about vaccines, uh, and I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, if you look at the number of people that die from influenza in the United States, it's about 20 to 60,000 people a year. Now, I, I would call that pretty significant. Um, so there are hundreds of thousands of hospitalizations related to influenza. And uh, so a lot of people kind of belittle that and think that's not a big deal, but I, I think that's a pretty big deal. So preventing it is a pretty, pretty important thing as far as I can tell. Absolutely. And so, you know, I know some of you out there are thinking, can I get the flu if I get the shot? Yeah, that's a common thing. People think, well, if I'm going to get this vaccine, it's, it, might, it might cause thing. Well, here's the news. You cannot get influenza from the flu vaccine. Uh, there is an immunological thing that happens when you get the flu vaccine. So it's designed to boost your immune system. So when you get a vaccine, the vaccine fires up your immune system. So why would you not expect to get a little achy, get a little sore, feel like you've had a little mild cold. There are these wonderful things called interleukins and kinins that get fired up, and that means your immune system works. So when you feel a little achy from it, that, that's not that you've gotten uh, influenza, it's that your body's firing things up. Occasionally, people get sick, but it's probably because you've been to our office with a bunch of people who have cooties, <laughs> and not that you've gotten the vaccine. So I hear this all the time, and just, I, you know, I have to settle this myth. You cannot get influenza from the flu vaccine. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I know that as people look at immunizations and you see how important they are, not just for children, but this is one out there to protect adults. And in the midst of COVID and all of the symptoms that are very similar, Yes. you know, <clears throat> making sure that you have some, I'm going to use the term arsenal, if you will, of things to protect your own health and things that you can do and relatively inexpensively for the most part if not for free. So where could someone get a vaccine? Well, there are lots of places to get the influenza vaccine. My, my first encouragement to people is just get it. Um, we often try to catch people when they're coming in for the routine follow-up. So you can certainly get it at your doctor's office. Um, if you're in Walmart and you're there and you want to get it while you're there, when you're at the pharmacy, um, there are places that have vaccine drives. Um, some places of employment offer them. Um, there are lots of places to get it. Just get it. Um, the other thing I would definitely recommend is that you keep a record of it and report it to your primary care doctor because we like to check that box and make sure you're getting good protection. So keep a record of it so your family doctor knows about it. And so some of us watching today are taking care of children. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be grandparents taking care of children. Is it important for children to get that vaccine as well? Yeah, I, you know, I think there's this hit or miss strategy that people enter into. So should I get it this year? And we, we go through that every year. So I just tell people, just, just get it. Um, if you look at studies of adults and children, on average, the adults in the United States get influenza every four to five years and children get it every two to three years. So, and oftentimes it's just a bad cold. Um, and I, I've seen whole families wiped out at Christmas. And all it takes is one time of that. And, and you know what I mean? Why would you do that? Why would you do that when the flu vaccine can protect you at least 40 to 60% of the time? The worst year on record was a year that it was about 20% effective. Everybody said, oh, it was terrible that year. It didn't protect me. Well, 20% is still 20%, right. but on average, getting an influenza vaccine has about, a th some people say 30, some people say 40 to 60% likelihood of keeping you from getting influenza that year. So 
I think those are pretty good numbers. Right. They yeah. are. They are excellent numbers. And, you know, it's really important that we do really um, healthy things to take care of ourselves. You know, drinking water and eating healthy and keep moving and exercising and all of those things play a great part. But vaccination is just one simple way, you know, that doesn't take a lot of effort. Right to make your um, immunity built for influenza. But moving on to this pandemic, so we have the influenza out there now, which we didn't have in the summer right. for the most part, but now we're moving into the fall flu seasons and you know the gastro symptoms of the stomach flu right. that people call it. And now we run into COVID all of a sudden, right? right? And people start with these symptoms. They're, they're not really sure they're participating with symptoms in things and going to church or going to civic organizations or family gatherings. We're getting ready for Thanksgiving, right. goodness sakes, right? And everybody's so used to that and we crave it. It's been yeah. a long time since you've <clears throat> had the touch of a human. <laughs> I mean, shaking yeah. a hand for goodness yes. sake. Yeah. So what do you recommend? So it is, th this is, this is just a really a tough season. Um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of misinformation out there, first of all. Um, uh, CDC does have a really great website for COVID information. And the other thing, uh, people are really frustrated. We, we live in this overdetermined society. Everybody wants to know why everything happens all the time. And you have to know that 11, 12 months ago, what did we know about COVID, y'all? We know nothing about COVID. So our, our knowledge about coronavirus is changing because it's new and we just don't know. And I've I've heard so many slams on the healthcare system and professionals, and they're saying, well, they don't know this and they don't know that. And I'm like, guys, we didn't know about this. This is new. Um, so a little disclaimer about that, but there is some good information. Um, I really am encouraging people to wear masks. There's this anti-mask group, and it's kind of like stop signs, you know? What if we just didn't watch the stop signs and we just did whatever we want? We don't do things in society because it's about me. We wear masks, we wash our hands, and we keep distance to honor each other. So I think mask wearing is about honoring each other. We keep distance to honor each other. And coronavirus is just going through the roof in this area. Meredith is, is, is filling up. We have more cases now than we've ever had. Our area is just flooded with cases, you all. And so I'm, we're really concerned. So it is gonna be a really important season for all of us to be careful. Um, and to wear our masks and to keep distance, and it is, it is a tough time. So wear your mask, keep distance, and think about what you're doing. And uh, CDC has a great website, and um, yeah, I, I, that's a lot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I no, that was great. Our local, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, our, our local health department has a wonderful website as well. You can go to Healthy Washington County. They also have some great information on there as well as the Meredith's website, you know, guiding people, giving direction. Yeah. If someone starts with symptoms and they're concerned about it, you know, I know you're offering telehealth options through your physician offices, and that's one way not to have to go in and expose right. an entire office, <clears throat> you know, and, and I know that the lines are really long yeah. for the COVID testing, and I know people are being turned away at the end of the day because they don't get there in time. Yeah. So any suggestions on when should I consider being tested if I'm in the general public? Yeah, so th this is a tough issue, um, and there's a lot of panic. So in general, if you are, if you can quarantine, and that's not a big deal, and you have very mild symptoms, you know that's certainly a reason that you don't have to get tested. And that's 14 uh, days, right? Yeah, right. In general, if you're exposed and you have very mild symptoms, and it's pretty easy for you to quarantine, it, there's really no reason to do testing. Um, if you're going to be around others and you need to know, that's when you want to be tested. Um, Right now, testing is really going up, and the lines are long. Um, it would be—I would love to tell you that you know we're going to bust open three more centers at Meredith and have it, but it is tough, you all. So you know, being patient and uh, with those lines, and you know, looking—you're uh, just going to have to be patient with that. Um, so if you're going to be exposed and you want to know, that's what you do. Um, realizing that you don't want to go to your doctor's office to get tested, because doing the test is an exposure for everyone involved. So the testing has to take place in an environment where an exposure would not take, would not happen. And a lot of people don't get that. So it has to take place as a drive up environment or outside. And we're really trying to be careful about that. Absolutely. And yeah. 
I think that's really important. And, you know, I know our bordering counties are struggling and they are seeing record high numbers as well. You know, we're seeing people bleed from county to county just for testing sites. You know, we're seeing that. And so it's really important that we do our part to protect ourselves. And you mentioned that social distancing, wearing a mask, washing your hands, how important that is. You know, if you don't have the ability to wash them with soap and water, but to use the 70% or higher hand gel, so super important. Right. So is there anything mm-hmm. else that you would like to add about the general health and safety right now in, in this climate? <clears throat> yeah, we talked a little bit about, um, I meant to say about difference between influenza and COVID. Um, a lot of people are asking about or wondering about COVID versus other colds. Coronavirus really causes symptoms that are very similar to most colds and coughs. Uh, the one group of symptoms that's a little different is the change in taste and smell. About a third of patients who have coronavirus will have uh, some uh, dysgeusia or anosmia or the technical terms, but a disturbance in their taste and their smell. Um, the other thing is that coronavirus will, can cause some diarrhea. We do not usually see diarrhea with influenza. Um, so those are some subtle differences, but by and large, fever, runny nose, cough, significant body aches, Um, The other thing that is uh, the incubation period for influenza is very quick. Um, For coronavirus, it tends to be the window is about four to seven days. So that's an important thing to remember as you are exposed. People ask about testing because if you're exposed to someone who has it, you're not likely to have symptoms for four four to seven days. And the 14-day thing comes from that's the longest period of time until some people have symptoms. But the usual window before you get symptoms is four to seven days. Consequently, if you're worried about symptoms and when they would appear, four to seven days is oftentimes how long it takes before they appear. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we've all heard about the asymptomatic person. Yes. You know, so our diligence is super important in this um, environment when we're talking about a pandemic of all the unknowns. And as we're learning as we go and we find out a little bit more, you know, uh, recently I heard there was a study about masks and how, you know, depending on how thick the mask is and how many layers, there may be actually a benefit to me, Right. you know, protecting myself. So, um, you know, I think just as we learn more and we do our part, we can help rectify all of these problems right. that are out there, Absolutely. not just with our healthcare system, but protecting ourselves and our loved ones as well. Right. So we go into this Thanksgiving holiday season and we just want to be sure that we're doing the right thing. So what's your recommendation around all these gatherings? What's your thought about that? Yeah, that's tough. Well, actually, my family, we have, uh, we have five kids and what do you do about that? And it, it, it's tough. So if you're working in the public and you're exposed to people, and then you're going to get together with family, um, there's a great potential to share with each other. And this is going to sound terrible, but you have to keep in mind the reason that you don't want to get together and be a super spreader event is what if somebody has it and spreads it and there's really a serious outcome? I mean, that, right. that that's, right. that's what you want to avoid. So some people are quarantining for two weeks prior to getting together with their family. Some people are doing testing before they get together, but once again, if you do it right before you get together, there's a four to seven day incubation period, and it depends on how long you're gonna be together with them. So the safest thing is if you wanna get together with family, you should quarantine strictly for two weeks prior to getting together, and then you would be safe. Um, And if you're gonna go out in public during that time, you know, you would wanna wear a mask and try to keep distant as best you can, but um, it's tough. There are it, those. It's tough. Um, being careful and quarantining prior to getting together would be my best recommendations. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, anything else that you'd like to add for today? <clears throat> you said something about allergies, and that's an interesting thing because there are people who are experiencing significant allergies right now, and how to differentiate that. Um, people in general with allergies get lots of sneezing, um, itchy ears, itchy eyes, and just watery nasal discharge. Um, Typically with colds, you don't get the sneezing and itchiness. Um, and you just get, you, uh, with allergies, you get just kind of the watery stuff, itchy eyes, and you know, some, some generic Claritin or, or Zyrtec is good. Um, that is another thing that people commonly get mixed up. With colds and uh, other things, you get, uh, you get more fevers, you get a lot of body aches, um, you feel the part of being achy. 
Um, the other thing that people frequently get up is you'll hear people use the term flu for anything that's uh -huh. sick. So influenza is one illness that's uh, an influenza virus that goes around the world every year. Um, flu is a term that's used loosely. You'll hear it used for stomach flu. Um, just a flu is any illness, but you want to make sure you're clear about it. So influenza is one family of viruses, and it tends to start off in Southeast Asia every year because people live with their animals. That sounds kind of goofy, but that's, that's where it comes from. People live with their animals in Southeast Asia, thus you get bird flu and swine flu, and it makes its transit around the world, and that's what the vaccine's for. The vaccine is not designed to protect you from every cold, just influenza. Um, so there's a little bit of some nomenclature, some naming that, that people don't understand. So influenza is just one illness. But typically, the peak of that uh, lasts about four to six weeks, and, and every year it's almost the same illness. It, it, it begins rather abruptly, achy, runny nose. Sometimes people actually tell you, you know, it started at 10.06. I, I remember I was sitting and it just rather abrupt onset. It's a really typical illness every year. It lasts for about four to six in the community and then it tends to, to go away. So that's, you know, pretty typical illness. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with coronavirus? I've heard great things about a, a vaccine that's coming. We'll wait and see how long that takes to get distributed. Well, I appreciate it. And sure. it's been an absolute pleasure having Absolutely. you. Hopefully you'll come back and do another series with us. Anytime. Great. Well, it has been a pleasure talking with you today and providing this very valuable information. Check out the websites at the local health department at Meredith and our website here at the Commission on Aging. Please stay safe, wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands, and until next time, enjoy living in.